Now, these images below and several others that I have below these, these images are natural fractals. So these are where fractals show up in nature. And this first picture here, this is an example of Romanesco broccoli, which if you look at the entire shape, you'll notice that as you look at, let's say one of these heads here, that it looks very similar to the entire shape here. And in fact, if we looked at one of these tiny sections of one of the heads, it would also look like the entire picture. And it demonstrates that self-similarity. Now, the main difference between the mathematical fractals and the natural fractals is that these do not have infinite self-similarity. If we zoomed in far enough, eventually that self-similarity will break down. But for many different scales or many orders of magnitude, this or all of these objects do exhibit self-similarity, as well as the other properties of fractals. And over here, we have two examples of what we might call branching fractals or fractal trees, since this is frost that can form on glass, and this is lightning. And that pattern in nature of these fractal trees will show up in various different applications. For instance, this right here, this is a Lichtenberg figure. If we run an electric current through some type of insulating material, we get this type of image here, and it does look remarkably similar to lightning since it is created from electricity. This right here is a picture of a river system from some type of satellite image. And you can see, again, this different branching pattern. And these branching patterns can also be formed from purely mathematical objects. This is a fractal tree. And we'll look at this in greater detail later, but this would have infinite complexity, whereas these different examples of lightning or rivers, these will not carry out that self-similarity to infinity. At some point, it will start to break down. For instance, with rivers, at some point, if you zoom in far enough, we'll get down to the size of, let's say, atoms or individual molecules, and they will no longer carry out this, this same type of fractal pattern. But let's look at a couple more examples, specifically fractals in the human body. You can see we have the circulatory system. This is a picture of neurons or the nervous system. And this is a picture of the lungs. And in each of these, you can notice that fractal pattern, that self-similarity. And if we zoom in or out in each of these systems, then we'll notice that self-similarity. So the human body, in many different cases, demonstrates these fractal patterns. And we'll look at one final example, and this is a mathematical fractal. In fact, you might call this an algebraic fractal since this is created from a type of equation. And we can write this down as a type of function. We can say f sub c of z is equal to z squared plus c. And this is not a normal type of function. This is a function that carries out a process called iteration we will essentially pick a point on this plane and plug it into this equation infinitely many times. And if the number approaches zero, we will color it black. And if the number approaches infinity, then we will give it some type of color. And of course, it's more complicated than that. For instance, we're actually doing all of this on the complex plane. But for now, we just want to look at this as an overview, and we'll look at the details in a later video, since this can get a little bit complicated. But what is really interesting about this type of fractal, in fact, this is called the Mandelbrot set. It's named after Benoit Mandelbrot, that with this fractal, it has this infinite complexity. If we, let's say, zoom in on a particular spot, we can zoom in on this infinitely and it will give us these amazingly detailed pictures and patterns that will 
repeat infinitely many times. So let's look at an animation where we actually zoom in on this part. And what we'll notice is that this overall picture will show up in some type of variation, but repeatedly. So we'll see this with some slight differences many different times as we zoom in. So as we zoom in, notice that we'll see that starting image, for instance, right here, show up but with slight variations. So it won't look the exact same every time, but it will show up in some type of form. And as we zoom in, this picture shows this infinite complexity. In fact, we could pick any point anywhere on this plane and zoom into that spot and we would see something very similar. And keep in mind that the animation we just looked at comes from a relatively simple equation or function here. And there is some complexity to this. It's not as straightforward as a normal function, but ultimately the process of generating this image is fairly straightforward and something that you can understand as long as you have a general understanding of complex numbers or imaginary numbers and the complex plane. So we will look at this and every other topic mentioned above in greater detail in later videos. But these fractals, not only do they show up in mathematics and in many different places in nature, they are also incredibly useful. So they can be used in many different engineering fields, but also show up in places like the movies that you might like to watch. So if you see computer generated images in a movie, Oftentimes, those are created from fractals or the ideas behind fractals. And we will look at those applications as well as many others as we progress through this topic.